Okay, here we go. This podcast contains explicit content. Let's begin the show by starting it. Hardly focused. This podcast is hardly focused. And it gets significantly more vulgar. Dissecting the news one tangent at a time. When there's nothing left to burn, you have to set yourself on fire. Hello, Nate. Hello, Mike. Hello. Welcome to Hello. Har- Welcome to Hardly Focused. Uh, it's the 18th of October, the 477th episode. Damn. Damn. Got a lot of episodes. A couple. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Um, this this is gonna shock you, but I was watching the uh, Patriots game. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, hold on, hold on. You Where's like Jack? You like baseball? I was watching. No, it's hockey. He loves hockey. That's crazy. Yeah, I watch hockey. I, I, I like, uh, I like hockey. But uh, the sad part is he actually knows hockey. Yeah. <laughs> so some, why were you watching a soccer game? To some degree. <laughs> um, yeah, I was watching the uh, the Patriots and uh, oh, the Denver Broncos. <laughs> just in time to see cam newton get the shit knocked out of him did you see that uh no because uh, uh oddly enough i don't watch as much sports as you apparently <laughs> <laughs> i don't believe you that is hearsay sir that is oh. that is hodgepodge wow it, it, have you watched one sport is that for me or is that for mike for both. I mean, if, <laughs> if you've watched one, you've watched more than me. Listen, 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 listen. Um, live or just like 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 highlights? Ever. Ever? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> ever. Then I guess in terms of ever, then yes, I have watched more sports than you, Nate. Uh, sweet. So are hey, Maggie. Those silver and blue guys are the Dallas Cowboys. They're daddy's favorite team. And he wants them to lose by less than five and a half points. Understand? <laughs> sorry, sorry mike i cut you off i said uh i've watched more sport than nate ah, okay uh back, back in uh my formative years and by that i mean when i was like three <laughs> so 2017 <laughs> um uh remember candlepin bowling on uh i think it was on a- abc oh my god yes yep with uh what the hell is that guy's name gillis his last name was gillis I think it was Don Gillis or John Gillis. I can't remember. I think it's Don Gillis. I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, recorded at the Fairway Lanes, the old, the former Fairway Lanes in Natick, Massachusetts. It's now uh, a rug outlet. Oh. Uh, but um, in that place, uh, this is what I love about Candlepin Bowling places. I mean, you, you really see it with any sort of bowling establishment, but especially with the Candlepin Bowling places. Um, they are true relics of the like 50s. He, he, yeah. They, they look at like 50s. You walk inside, and it's like the 50s. It's like a time machine. Uh, there was one down the street from me that just recently closed. Uh, no surprise, thanks to the pandemic. But you walked in there. I mean, there was no, there were no televisions. There were no, uh, there was nothing electronic. Even the, the, the methods for keeping scores was all done yes. by hand on paper. I grew up never knowing that there was actual th- a thing called like automatic scoring. I always thought in bowling that you had to te- keep track of your own score on paper. Like I never realized that there was an actual way to electronically do it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's computers, man. It's all about computers now. You're taking over, man. And the question of, okay, if I got a strike and then I got another strike, but I got a spare, like how does that work out with numbers? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with a uh, robot doing all the math. That's fine with me just to do it and then I'll live my life. Yeah. I'm I'm fine doing it either way as long as it's with candle pen. And everybody that's outside of New England and oddly enough Ohio <laughs> is like, what the fuck are they talking about? 
Yeah, Ohio. They have it in yeah, Ohio. I it, yeah, I think Ohio is the outside liar for from outside of New England. Weird. Yeah, uh, Candlepin Bowling. If you if you're not from New England and you have no idea what that is, just look it up. It it's is called real bowling. Thank you very much because it was invented before ten pin bowling. Yeah, you get yeah. the fuck out of here. Candlepin, light bulb, and then your traditional. Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, duck pin? I was just like making candles, you know, light bulbs. Okay. There's an Edison joke in there somewhere. I don't know. I'm was not animal. really here today. I'm like, I just showed up. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said duck pin because who uh, who does duck pin? I wrote. I think it's exclusively Rhode Island. Oh, well, there you go. Have to be different. Yeah, I mean it's Rhode Island. Basically, duck pin bowling is basically take a ten pin bowling bowling pin, shrink it down to about what like five or six inches total, and then round off the bottom. A little bit and mm -hmm. then that is your duck pin candle pin is literally basically a stick it's it's a a two and three quarter inch vertical stick and that is it but, but the ball is smaller the too, ball right? is also the size of a bocce ball uh for those of you who don't know bocce <laughs> will fuck you too but it's about <laughs> the size of a grapefruit yeah well you can't. It's a, It looks like it's about the size of my head if I do it from here. But <laughs> fuck, there's no way to do it. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the candle pin balls are like what three pounds as opposed to the ten pin ball, which is like a minimum of eight. So now, do do we know duck pin? Are the rules different from ten pin and, and candle pin? Um, I think they're the same. Question mark. I've never played. I've never played duck pin because literally, it, like, I don't have. There's nothing in the area. It's only down in Rhode Island. Because I know candle pin. I mean, the the rules are different enough that I, you know, there there was a weird phase that my my friends and I went through back in oh like 2008, 2009. It's called it's called puberty. Or, or yeah, I say like 2008. Yeah, puberty. Yeah, great time. Great time. I'm still, I'm still waiting. Acne everywhere. <laughs> One of these days, One Jack. Of, it's gonna be me. me. <laughs> if I had a girlfriend, she'd kill me. <laughs> yeah, it was like 2007, 2008. We went through this weird phase where we were going ten pin bowling every week, and uh, on on Fro's birthday, I remember um, we we actually went to a, a candle pin place, and we were all thrown uh, thrown askew because the rules were different. Huh. Not to mention, again, going back to um, the the candlepin places being relics of the past, we had to do, do the math by hand, and everyone's looking at each other like, "What the fuck do we do?" Numbers. Uh, apparently, uh, duck pin is scored the same as candlepin. Okay, that makes it easy. That's reassuring. Yeah. yeah, and for all those people who are like, "What? What are you talking about?" Candlepin and duck pin use three balls total per frame that you can use, as opposed to two. And uh, it's infinitely harder to get a perfect game. There's no such thing as actually a perfect game that's been bowled in candle pin or duck pin. <gasps> Challenge accepted. <laughs> and I'm on it. Now, I don't know about 10 pin, but in candle pin, you can get wood. Yes, you can get a lot of wood. And sometimes uh, you can you, you can work some dead wood in there. And that's a little necrophilia right there. Yep. These are all real terms, by the way. Wood is where the pin... Um, it it it's in between like uh, I I think I know where you're going with this, yeah in between a t a a, uh, a ten pin frame you bowl one ball they lift the pins up and they remove anything that's been knocked down in candle pin nothing gets moved you have a ball you roll let's say you get like a couple pins down if those pins are laying down in the lane they're still playable you can actually use that wood in there to like ricochet off and do stuff. Oh, yeah. They only clear it out after you've done your third ball. Oh, okay. And depending upon, I, I don't know this because I've never used an actual uh, non-mechanical lane. The dead wood that's in the gutter, if you get a gutter ball, I've always used that as live. So if I get a gutter ball and it go really fast, I can kick the dead wood out of the gutter and it can ricochet off and actually get pins. Yes. And I don't know if it's actually like legal, legal, like if I was in tournament play, if it would work. But it's fun to be like, ah, oh, damn it, I got a gutter ball and actually get something uh, out of it. Yeah. Uh, hang on. I, I've never done it. So I've always <laughs> wanted to, do, but I've always yeah. wanted to go candle pin, but you've never, never did. gone candle pin? Oh, dude. No. We're going to oh, take God. a candle pin bowling. Uh, Apex in Marlboro has, I believe they have both. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. Both 10 pin and candle pin. 
I grew yeah. up in Lemonster with Mason Bowling Alley, which had 36 lanes. Damn. Of candle pin. Damn. So, yeah. And I was like, oh, there's all these lanes of candle or 24 lanes of candle pin, I think. Maybe 36. Either way. Yeah. At least two dozen. And it's like, if it's that, if I've got that many, like, that must be the real bowling then. Yep. Uh, so. I, yeah. I was going to go in March, but guess what happened? Yeah. Womp. Yeah. Uh, it's a dying art because all the. Uh, you, you know, all the the great candlepin lanes are all gone now. Except, uh, I think I believe it's called Fairway. That was in Natick. Uh, Colonial was down the street from me. Th- those are both gone. Um, lanes, lanes and games over in Cambridge. Uh, when you're going down Route Two, closed down, and they got turned into a luxury apartments. Mm. And they had they had candlepin on the second floor, ten pin on the first floor. Oh, I know exactly where that is. What you're talking yep. about, I know exactly yep. that area. It's right where and like then, it where. Any of the rush hour traffic on Route Two yep. starts right there. Yeah, yeah, it's right when all, right, Route Two goes from four lanes to two, and everybody's like, "What the fuck's going on?" And then that's where it used to be. <laughs> why, why, yeah. why does it go to two lanes as you're going into the city? Oh, well, because because <laughs> Boston Boston is a bunch of assholes. <laughs> yep. I mean, oh, not, not for nothing. Route Two actually turns into a surface street instead of an actual highway to get into Boston. That's how small it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in all and fairness, then, dude, so, go ahead. Go. I was going to say Sacco's Bullhaven is in Cambridge and they cut down half their lanes to make a small microbrew, which I'm like, okay, I guess uh, in order yeah. to maintain, you know, uh, profitability, but right. I the think roads to Boston have to not make sense because the roads in Boston don't make sense. Yeah. So it's just like a prep yeah. prep sheet before you get into the city. Like it's going to get confusing. It's going to get a lot worse. I don't remember if I don't, th- I don't, I don't think Jackie were on the street team yet. But it might have been there was a uh, in in I think it was technically Cambridge or Somerville. Um, there was a like a uh, an Italian feast day, like feast is like you know Saint Anthony or you know Saint Pasta Visual. Um, I don't think you were working it, but we okay. we did a little event there, and I'm heading out, so I'm like I got to go around because the main street is closed off. So I go down a street, and I see do not enter in front of me, and then I'm like okay, well I probably want to go right. And I look to my right. Do not enter. I'm like, oh, I guess I have to go left. And I look to my left. Do not enter. <laughs> so it's not a dead end street, but I'm literally at a four way stop going, I can't do anything but pull a Yui and get out of here. Yeah. Wow. And that's the logic of these roads. Yep. That describes it. Yep. And the only time you'll actually get stopped and get ticketed is if you actually go down one of the wrong way streets because they will, they, they, they know. Fucking uh, yeah, BBD. What are you doing? What are you doing, you moron? They know. Oh, look, for I'll let you jaywalk any day of the week, but you don't go down <laughs> the wrong way. That's what always surprised no. me when I was like uh, in my teens. And, and then like, I was visiting out of state. Like, don't just cross the street. I'm like, what are you talking about? They'll ticket you. I'm like, what is what, what is this ticketing that you speak of about jaywalking? Yep. You just pick a spot where you can walk in between the cars and you're good to go. Yep. Uh, going back to bowling, I think it's in uh, Northboro, I believe. But there's a, I remember it, it's in like the center of town and it's on like, it's on just like a little side street right off uh, Route 30. And it's a, it's a little candle pin alley. It's got like four lanes and it's almost like a speakeasy. But you can oh. see that you can see the sign, though. It's visible from Route 30. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I've never been there. I went in there once and it's just, there's just like four lanes and uh, it's, it's almost like a, I hate the term, but a hidden gem. I, I, I want to go oh, there. You said it out loud. <laughs> yeah, I still said it. Um, it sounds so, cute. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, that's sports on Hardly Focused. Sports, 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 sports. I'd rather sports, talk about bowling, man. Bowling's fun. Oh yeah, it Bo- is. Bo- it any, is. Anytime I go bowling, I a wipe the floor with everybody because I'm just the best at it, kind of. And then I always end up like throwing my hip out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you old I, man. I do one of those things. Do you want to guess which one? <laughs> I think I made a hundred points once. <laughs> <laughs> which which in candle pin would be actually respectable. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, that's the other reason why I like candle pin. You're like, oh, I got a hundred. Like, not bad. You're actually doing pretty good. Like, I got a hundred and uh, and ten pin. Oh my god, you suck. Yeah, so, yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it's hard though in candle pin to do that that twist with the ball. 
that you can do in ten pin. Like just as you're letting go of the ball and you can you can throw you a, do little, a little flick. Yeah, yeah. so then you can curve it. Um it's, it's very... more like a finger curl in in candle pin because it's it's literally the you know softball sized. Right. Yeah. As opposed to like a flick of the wrist where you get like that momentum going. And that's what I loved about like Fairway and Colonial and all the all the candle pin lanes is that all of the candle pin balls there were were pretty much there since the the places respectively opened. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they're all just dinged and they got chunks missing out of them and, <laughs> and it was just it was so authentic and then like you could you could pay extra to get and use one of the the actual like uh, maintained polished candle pin balls out of the case and those were the ones that always had the um the, like the the special finish on it it was signed by sam adams <laughs> there was a there was a dude and i can't believe i remember his name um, but he was on that 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 Candlepin bowling show back in back on on Channel Five, and I think it, I, I'm 99 percent sure his name was Jack Quincy. And the dude, the way he bowled, there's a certain way that you bowl, right? Like everyone pretty much bowls the same way. Uh, mm-hmm. th- not, and then you have the people who like they don't know how to bowl, so they take the two hands and they like put it under their legs and then roll it that way. Mm-hmm. And this dude did a combination of both with the Candlepin right. balls. He would start, he would like go up and then go between his legs and then back up again. And then he would do the one handed. But it was always, it was, it's kind of like how Nomar always had his, his ritual, right? With the, uh, with the gloves, you'd always have to do the, the yeah, pull, pull him down, pull him down, pull him down, pull him down. Yeah. Tap, 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 pull him down again. Yeah. It's, it's that, that's what this dude bowling, he had to do that in order to, uh, in order to just bowl and he would win the cha- like every year when they did the championships he would always win but it's he, he would have to do this odd ritual this odd power stance when bowling hmm that's Maybe a good term for it a power stance power, power stance. stance yes that's what i need i feel like when i go bowling like i always have like it's always fun but i always have like the most awkward experience because like in the beginning, I do really great. And they're like, wow, Nate, you're really good at bowling. I was like, hang on, just wait. <laughs> and then like halfway through the game, I like lose it. And like, I just get gutter ball. I, I like, I get a hundred super early and people are like, holy crap, he's amazing. I'm like, no, please don't. Just wait, <laughs> just wait. Just wait. And then like, have that's it. There, there comes a moment. I guess my arm gets tired or something. It's gotta be like, it. Yeah. Maybe you're not pacing yourself. Yeah. So. I mean, I get that way too. Um. Like I said, you know, I, I I joked earlier about throwing my hip out, but uh, you know, it it does if especially if you're not doing it regularly and if you don't do any stretches or anything, um, you you know, you you run the risk of screwing up your wrist. Yeah, not in my prime right now. <laughs> like I, I I get up every now and then and go upstairs, but that's about it. I don't go for walks anymore and don't go to the gym. Oh, you got to at least go for walks, man. I mean, it's nice out. It's 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 officially basic bitch weather. It's pretty nice out. It smells like fall. I got the window open and it smells like fall outside. There's a there's a distinct uh It's aroma. like when it smells like snow or smells like rain. You're like it, there's a there's a a je ne sais quoi about the air. Yes. It is the leaves rotting and they <laughs> smell like that. It's about death. It's so brutal. It's death. The whole month is about death. Whole month. The whole fucking year is about death. What do you want? Oh, Where you been? True. <laughs> uh, so that's the smell. I thought it was me not taking a shower. <laughs> uh, it's that too. Well, they mix. Mike is a fellow homeowner. Uh, I think you can sympathize here. Uh, I think I did the last cut of the year yesterday. Uh, yeah, I think I looked and I was like, can I get away with it? And I think I do have to do like one cut. Yep. It's because it's been happy? raining. Uh, I mean, I, I think I went the way that the, everything was growing and not growing because of the heat. Like I like having August where the grass basically dies out in the front yard because I don't care about it. <laughs> and so that means I don't have to mow the front lawn for like a, a month or two, which makes okay. it easier. And I, don't, I only care about the backyard so that the kids can play in there and actually have green grass under their feet. Right. I went and reseeded my front yard and, and uh, part of my backyard, and uh, I did this in, in like mid September, and then I was watering it every day. And all the parts, like just because I was watering it, all the parts that were just oh, uh, like barren, 
then became lush and overgrown. So, and then we, we, we've had, I think it's, you know, they, they, it's hurricane season, right? And I think we've had sort of the residuals of storms mm-hmm. that have hit down South because it's been pouring rain the last couple of days. A lot. Yeah. So, uh, I, I think, I think you can get one more cut in if, if you do it very soon. I took the air conditioners out though. Uh, that's, that's something I was planning on doing, but uh, I have to coordinate with, uh, two underfoot children that want to like oh, yeah. jump out the window when it's open and then also <laughs> go down cellar with, with me on you know, them underfoot. And I'm like, Hey, I got a 30 pound thing. that's going to kill you if it falls on you. So please don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 37 degrees all last night. That's why I took it out or took all three of them out. Cause I saw the weather. I saw it was going to be cold. And uh, what are you, what are you a southerner? You got to keep that bathroom window open all the way till December. You know what I yeah. found out the other day? Hold on. You know what I found out the other day? Um, so, the, you know, the last couple of years, it, we've been, it, you know, it gets open floor plan in the house. It gets really cold. And, uh, you know, we 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 last year put a towel um, in front of our back door just to, you know, keep some of the heat in. Um, we've got uh, you know, cover the windows with uh, like. The, the really heavy duty curtains, but I found out like two days ago that the door going into my garage, you basically have to body slam that thing to get it to latch. Oh, wow. Classic. So I, I'm wondering now if the reason why it's been so goddamn cold in my house every winter is because that door this whole time, because I go in and out of there frequently and it just hasn't been closed all the way this whole time. So That's your problem. So I'm going to try that this winter. I'm going to, like I said, you literally have to like push up against it to hear that click. And because last night, man, like I said, 37 degrees, fucking toasty. So who knows? And it's going to come to get to a point, too, because this happens every winter. When I look at the temperature right now, I'm thinking it's say like 37 degrees. That's really fucking cold. Three months from now, 37 degrees, man. Uh, T-shirt weather. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not ready, man. I'm already cold. Like I'm in a sweatshirt. You guys have your t-shirts on and I, I'm, I'm wearing a sweatshirt, but I'm also wearing a long sleeve shirt under it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to die. Why? Just, just, why? Why are you so cold? I have no idea, dude. I was going to put out like a status like, but I was like, no, I bet no one is as cold as me. I are don't know what anemic? it is. I'm, I, probably i don't know it could be the medication that i'm on it could be also that it's just a crazy year and yeah. that i'm becoming a I'm, snowman I'm dead on the, you're literally dead on the inside so therefore there is no internal heat yeah <laughs> it, it's, it's, i'm becoming jack frost so i'm gonna be a snowman by the time winter i'm excited I, i'm excited for you build a snowman yeah yeah Gonna be good. It's gonna be, fun. It's gonna be, be. It's gonna be fun. Next time I see you in person, I'm just gonna sh- jam a carrot in your face. <laughs> Here's your nose, Mister Snowman. And, and I'll be like, "Oh wait, what is fuck? What does he say uh, when he puts the hat on?" Frosty is like, cool. "Happy birthday" or something like that. Oh, I was remember thinking. That, remember that cartoon? I was thinking Family Guy when he starts like picking fights. True. <laughs> that that's that's probably a better reference yeah well can we can you like just delete my audio and just put your audio there and cool great good talk <laughs> hardly com slash nate the space bear comedy <laughs> channel <laughs> and uh uh we're also uh on all the podcast apps we're on apple Podcasts, spotify wherever you get your podcast just search for hardly focused and we're also on youtube at hardlyfocused.com slash YouTube. I don't know what the hell happened, but uh, that that whole segment that we did during episode 476 where we talked about uh, Trump and his protective glow for some reason uh, garnered uh, hundreds of views. Whoa. And that's, you know, not through doing any sort of promotion or or really doing... I don't don't know if I just like won the lottery, the the keyword lottery or or what, but... Trump. Trump, 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 yeah. Trump, 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 Trump. <laughs> See, I thought that was detrimental. I thought if you mentioned Trump or, or coronavirus or COVID, then, uh, you know, your shit just gets buried on YouTube. Dude, I have, it does it never makes any sense. Don't ever try to understand it because it, it will just completely rot your brain. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't, uh, we have the audio on on hardlyfocus.com in that that segment but uh, the video I had to cut it before we did the Bill Burr discussion because uh it kept getting blocked 
got blocked yeah. on YouTube. It got blocked on Facebook. I was I was surprised, and it was getting blocked like the second I posted it, the second it uploaded. Yep. So, um, what is that? NBC? Yeah. Yeah, they're real good at that. They're okay with me posting that Simpsons clip, but then when, once I posted the Bill Burr thing and, and was posting it in chunks too, because I'd play a little bit and then stop and then, and then minimize the video. Yep. I, I don't get it. Doesn't matter. There's no fair use for them. No. Anyway, hi. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we have a segment called Hardly Shuffled, and this is a playlist that... You can follow at hardlyfocused.com slash shuffled. Every week we pick the songs that are stuck in our heads. Uh, we've been doing it for uh, over a month now. It's, I'll, in all honesty, these are my favorite production pieces to put together because like, I, I end up hearing things I've never heard before, the, the, the picks that you guys make, or uh, I, I'm like in, in Mike's case, hearing something from an album that I hadn't listened to in years. Yeah, I listen. What to happens it too. when you're a huge fan of a specific uh, band, and just like I, I, I can play through the deep stuff. Yeah. So uh, here is our hardly shuffled segment for this episode. 